In this video, I'm going to be telling you about how to tell your story in investment banking interviews in five simple steps. And on this site before, I've talked a lot about your story, some of the key mistakes you might be making, and some of the points to keep in mind. But now I want to go a step further and actually give you a blueprint for how to tell your story. And the reason why this is so important, your story, is that in interviews, it's usually the first thing that they're going to ask you, and it's going to set the tone for the rest of the entire interview. And so if you make a poor first impression, it's going to be almost impossible to overcome. I can tell you from firsthand experience that generally in interviews, a decision can often be made within two to three minutes just based on the strength of your story, your attitude, whether or not you're making eye contact with the person, your general level of enthusiasm. So really, in a lot of cases, your story is what decides whether or not you get an offer or you don't get an offer. Also, even though your story is really important, it's one of the areas where people kind of tend to slip on the proverbial banana peels. And they make a lot of mistakes that can be easily fixed. Now, if you go into an interview and you don't know technical questions, you don't know anything about accounting, that's not something that you can fix in an hour or two. But your story, you can fix in that amount of time if you have the appropriate resources and you're doing it the right way and you follow the steps outlined in this video. Now, just to clarify, what I'm talking about specifically with your story is usually in an interview, you're waiting in a room with everyone else. And then the interviewer comes in and greets you. And then you go to another room and then he asks you to walk through your resume or CV where he says, tell me about yourself or ask, why do you want to do investment banking? Something like that. So the questions here are always a little different, but the concept is always the same, that it's really the first question that kicks off any interview and explains your background, why you're there, what you're doing and why you're interested in this job. So now for how to actually do this, how to actually tell your story in five simple steps. So the way I've broken it down here is first is the beginning, your roots, where you start your introduction and explain where you're coming from. Next will be your finance spark. So this is what made you initially interested in finance or investment banking. And this is important because it's one of the few areas where you can really set yourself apart from everyone else with a unique story here. Third is your growing interest. And in this one, you're going to explain how your sequence of activities, internships, or full-time jobs has made you increasingly more interested in investment banking. And then finally, at the end, these last two points, why you're here today and your future sort of go together. But the basic idea is that you need to state explicitly why you're here interviewing right now in this group, in this bank, and how it's going to relate to your future plans and how you see this as the next logical move and how it's going to help you achieve future success. So now that we have this outline, let's go through each of these steps in more detail. So for the beginning, I think there are really three good places you can start your story. First is where you were born, where you were raised, where you grew up. And this one's appropriate if you're at the undergraduate or perhaps recent graduate level. Second is where you went to college, university. This one's more appropriate if you're interviewing for MBA level positions or perhaps even beyond that. And then third is where you went to business school. This one's more appropriate if you're interviewing for very high level positions, VP and above. Most people looking at this video are probably not going to be in this position, but I'm just mentioning it in the interest of completeness. Now, you don't always have to follow these strict guidelines. One exception could be that if you have an extremely unusual background, having lived in 20 countries or done something really unconventional that they're not going to see all the time, then you may want to start at where you were raised, where you were born, even if you're going for higher level positions. But never dwell on your beginning unless it's highly relevant to your interest in investment banking and what you're doing now. Next is your finance spark. So for this one, specificity is key. After you've introduced yourself and explained where you came from, how you decided on college, what you decided to do once you got there, you need to explain somewhere in the course of that how you actually got interest in finance to begin with. And as I mentioned before, this one's really important because it's one of the few chances you'll have to set yourself apart from everyone else. A couple ways you can do this. Information sessions, case competitions, spring programs if you're in Europe, for example. You could talk about student investing clubs you've been in, activities like that. Again, with this one, specificity is key. So if you just talk about a generic sounding type of club, that's not going to be good. But if you talk about how you won first place at a case competition because you made an investment recommendation in Pfizer and then it went up by 50%, then that's a much better story. You could also reference specific people, talk about their titles, where they worked, what they did, how they made you interested. So people are always good to talk about here. People, events, activities. Another popular approach is to talk about any of your own investing that you've done with your own portfolio. This one tends to work better for hedge funds or for sales and trading, for example, but you can still use it for investment banking. If your family was involved in business, if they owned a family business or even a large corporation, for example, you could talk about that and how that background made you interested in business and finance and investment banking. You could also think about summer programs, even from before university. Any type of summer program, any type of special program that you're in that made you interested or that opened your eyes to the possibility of finance and investment banking. 
Now, if you don't have something as specific as this, it's not the end of the world, but if you do, or if you have anything that's close, I strongly urge you to spin it as much as possible into sounding relevant and into sounding memorable, because otherwise the interviewer will probably not remember you that well. Next, you need to go into your growing interest here. And a lot of people get this one wrong for a couple of reasons. One is that they don't go in chronological order. You have to go in chronological order here. You don't need to say everything that happened along the way, but you do need to start from the earliest experience and then go to the most recent one. You also need to show how they're logically connected. What I mean by logically connected is that you have to show how each experience had something that was related to investment banking and then had something that you didn't like or something that you wanted to change about it. And of course, the way you change that is by moving closer to finance and investment banking. So as a quick example of how to do this, a lot of university students start off with library jobs, on-campus jobs, then they want to do something more business related. So they go to marketing or business development at a company, and they like the fact that they're working with customers, they're doing something related to the overall company and the business, but they want to do something more quantitative and something that's more demanding. So they decide to go to private wealth management, which they like because there's more analysis involved, they're still working with clients, but they want to do something on a larger scale, which is what has brought them to investment banking and has made them interested and is why they're interviewing here today. So you have to give some kind of version of a story like that. Now, one problem that you may run into is that if you've been through many career changes, so maybe you're interested in skydiving, then you went to construction, then you wanted to become a baker, then you wanted to replace Jack Bauer in 24, then you became a monk, and then you went back to a cubicle. Well, that's a very complicated story, and you don't want to go through all those hops. I would say keep it to two to three career changes or mindset changes at the most. Otherwise, the interviewer is not going to be able to process everything. So in this example, maybe we drop the less relevant experience and just talk about moving from engineering to oil engineering specifically, energy engineering, and then finally moving to something closer to finance at the end. Now, once you've explained your growing interest, you need to conclude your story with explaining why you're here today and how it's related to your future plans. Now, a lot of people misinterpret what I say here, and they think that it's okay to sort of leave this implicit and not to state explicitly why you're here today. I would encourage you to be as explicit as possible and to literally say something like, I am interviewing here today at this bank because, and make it very, very obvious. Now with this question, you really have to answer two things. One is why this bank and why this group, if you know the group that you'll be in. And then the second is why now? Now the why now question is easy if you are a student and you're graduating because you need to find a job, you need something to do. It's harder if you've been working for a while. In that case, you wanna talk about how you've achieved a considerable amount at your current position, but you feel there are limits to what you can do there and you want to move somewhere else where you can better apply your skills. Now, as for the why banking and why this group part of the equation, this one is very easy if you're interviewing for an industry group and you have a background in the industry. The classic example that I always give is tech or healthcare, and you're coming from those backgrounds and you're interviewing for those groups now because you want to do something more business related. But if you're not, then you could approach it in a couple different ways. If you're coming from a finance background, maybe you could talk about how you worked at other banks, but you didn't like the culture, you didn't like the types of companies you work with, but you do like them here. With this type of question, you really have to think about what you've done in the past and then how it's going to relate to your future and how banking fits into that picture. And then going along with this, you also need to talk about your future here. And this is sort of part of the last point you want to raise, which is why you're interviewing for banking, why this group, and how it relates to your future. Now with this one, a bank does not necessarily expect you to know every single thing about your future. What they want, what they care about, is that you've given it some thought, you've contemplated it a little bit, and you have some idea of what you want to be doing and how banking is going to get you there. So you don't need to have everything for your future precisely laid out, cemented, and set in stone, but you want to have some idea of how banking is going to help you get there. So what I would suggest doing instead is talking about how this bank and this group specifically are going to lead you to achieve success with your future goals. Two popular future goals that you could use, say that you want to become either an investor in this industry and you see banking as a good way to get there, combining your expertise in a region or in an industry, for example, with finance which will help you become either an investor to companies one day or an advisor to those companies as well. Now, again, if you're coming from more of a finance background and you don't have anything like that to say, then maybe you talk more about how you're interested in advising a specific type of company or working in a specific culture, working in a specific team, and how you really want to do that in the long term and how this bank or this group are the best way for you to get there. If you're interviewing for the associate level, you do want to show some more commitment to actually doing investment banking because they don't want people who are going to just jump ship to private equity or hedge funds after a year. So keep that in mind as well. So now that we've been through how to tell your story in investment banking interviews in five simple steps, you might be wondering, what do you do from here now that you know this process? What I would suggest doing is looking at your resume, consulting with family or friends if necessary, going through all your previous experiences, and then highlighting these five specific points. The beginning, where are you going to start? Is it going to be where you grew up, where you went to college, where you went to business school? 
your finance spark? Was it a person, an event, something that you did personally, day trading, a summer program? Figure out what it is and then use that consistently in all your interviews. Next, your growing interest. Which two, three, maybe four different internships, jobs, or activities you're going to talk about? And what element of those did you like? What element did you want to change each time? And how did each one of those move you closer to investment banking? Next, why you're here today. Are you going to combine your previous background and expertise with finance to achieve success? Are you here because you worked in finance before, but you want to change something about it, or you're more interested in a specific type of company? And then finally, going along with that, your future. What do you see yourself doing in the long term? You don't need to know exactly what it's going to be, but you wanted to say something related to finance or business if you're at the undergraduate level. And if you're entering for associate level positions or up, then you definitely want to show some long term lasting commitment to investment banking here. So what I would urge you to do is take these five points after going through your resume and make a brief outline for them points one through five here, and then sketch out a brief outline of them, and then just practice telling your story with a friend or with people who have already broken into the industry. Don't memorize it word for word. That's a really, really bad idea. It's going to sound very stilted, artificial, and fake if you do that, but instead make a quick outline of what you want to say, and then practice telling it to your friends or to anyone else you know who's already in the industry. Aim for two to three minutes. If you speak really fast, as I have been doing in this video, then maybe aim for two minutes. If you speak more slowly than I do right now, then maybe aim for three minutes. But I would say between two or three minutes is appropriate for your story. So that's a quick overview of how to tell your story in investment banking interviews in five simple steps so that you can start succeeding in interviews and start landing investment banking offers.